bones. We are back. Did you feel it, buddy? Did you feel it? Oh, I felt it. I uh, actually felt like one of my toes was growing back. Oh, Mr. Bones, I felt like my feet were off the ground. You all felt it too, didn't you? Shemini Atzeret was the closest we ever guessed. I mean, it was almost it. It literally, I mean, we were all waiting and it's like you could just feel this collective lift in the spirit. That's our warm up, okay? So we're, we're ready for the next one. It's, it's so close, we can taste it. Oh, taste and see the grace and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Mr. Bones, I'll tell you what, I'm, uh, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna venture to make a guess at when the rapture is gonna be. Oh, uh, uh, what? Don't do that, Dr. Barry. I mean, what if you're r r r wrong? <laughs> Mr. Bones, the chances of me being wrong are dwindling every day. So I am going to make a guess, and I think I'm gonna use the words of Jesus. It shall be as it was in the days of Noah. Now, what do we know about the days of Noah, Mr. Bones? Well, first of all, Enoch was taken, raptured, way before the flood. In fact, 669 years before the flood. Enoch, whose name means dedicated, He's one body, the seventh from Adam. Many references to the church. That one body was taken because he walked with God 669 years before the flood. So is that an indication of a time period? Like perhaps the rapture will happen 669 months, days before the tribulation? Not sure. 669 as far as applying it to years before the end when the when the very end when god pours out all his wrath at the seventh year of tribulation i don't know there's there's got to be something there because that's how god is and we know also that noah's father lamech died and lamech means the despairing lamech died five years before the flood so again, is that an indication of something that happens before the very end in the tribulation, the seventh year of the tribulation? So when we look at Enoch being raptured, Lamech dying five years before the flood, then what triggered the flood, Mr. Bones? His death shall bring Methuselah. Methuselah died, and this was right at the time. His name means his death shall bring. And this was the destruction that would come. So everybody knew when they met Methuselah, they're like, hey, you feeling okay? You think you got another couple years in you? And so he, of course, lived longer than anybody, 969 years. Wow, Enoch was taken 669 years before the flood. And then Methuselah lived 969. I don't know, there's something with these numbers. I think God's trying to tell us something. I'm not sure. I think he's trying to tell us something. So... When he died, then Noah, God had already explained to Noah, my spirit shall not always strive with man. His days shall be 120. So 120 years before the flood, God instructed Noah, I'm going to have you build an ark and you get ready at the 120th year. This thing's on. It's over. So he had already had Methuselah born into the world and he was aging and nobody knew how, how old he would be when he died. But it happened to be at that 120th year. That's when Methuselah hit 969 and he died. Now, 969 is 31 years short of a thousand. Interesting. Just a detail to pay attention to. 31. So, um, Again, where you guys use your mind to think on these clues. When I'm reading through a story, all these details jump out at me and I'm like, hmm, what is my Lord trying to communicate to us? What is he hinting at? But he had those line up. So the 120 lined up exactly with the 969. They would get on the ark and then did the flood happen right away, Mr. Bounds? Uh, no, actually he said, Get in the ark and I will shut the door and you shall wait seven days. For after seven days shall the waters be upon the earth. Yes. So for those of you that are uh, antsy to know what my guess is, uh, of course, we know it's going to be at the time of the flood. But they got into the ark on the 10th day 
of the second month in according to the story, which is our eighth month, which will be November 11th. 11-11 was the, and will be the anniversary of when they should have gotten on the ark. Then after seven days, so from 11-11 to 11-18, okay? For all of the, those that only got a minute to uh, watch, you, here's, here's my guess. Between 11-11 and 11-18, uh, that's, that's our time frame of when we get on the ark until uh, the flood waters were upon the earth, which was the 17th day of the second month, okay? Again, the story of Noah is flipped by six months, according to Exodus 12. But pay attention because the 17th day of the eighth month is 40 and seven days past the Feast of Trumpets. 40 and seven days past. When you look at the times of, of the Exodus and how God arranged his appointed times, many times in the story, it will talk about 40 and seven, 40 days and 40 nights, but seven days on the mountain eating and drinking, and then another 40 and seven in the story. We know that they, they equate out to like 50 days, but God will always highlight 40 and seven, 40 and seven. So here we are. There's a very interesting thing about to happen. And I've been saying for a while that uh, I think God's plan is happening and I'm voting for his plan to come true. And I know that the very first seal that's opened after the church is in heaven and we are singing to him that he has saved us out, out of every kindred and nation and tongue by his blood. We're singing to him as he's getting ready to open the title deed of earth the seven sealed scroll is the title deed to earth and the inheritors have to be there. So we are in heaven. He opens up the first seal and a white horse rider goes out conquering and to conquer. This man will come with a bow or a covenant. This is the peace covenant that starts the tribulation. He will bring peace to the Middle East and he will build a temple for Israel. Who do we know, hmm, Mr. Bones, who do we know that could bring peace to the Middle East and arrange the building of Israel's temple, the third temple? Uh, let's see, uh, I had it here a minute ago. Uh, it's, it's on the top of my head. I can't think of it exactly. We all know who the guy is. He's the guy. And we're set up for tomorrow. Hopefully I got this thing out tonight. For tomorrow, to get the results of this, here's another prediction. I predict Trump wins. I predict Trump goes into office and with the power invested him as the president of the United States, he will use that power and authority to bring peace to Israel and the Middle East and make all the different deals, the treacherous dealer deal treacherously, to get everything arranged that they get their third temple and they start making, going back to their sacrifices and going back to what they believe is the way to please God. So I think he gets in. Even if something seems chaotic and someone else gets in, you know, don't worry. Something will happen because Jesus already won. Okay? And we're not for the blue or the red we're for the lamb can you see that we're for we're voting for the land or we're, we're voting for jesus's plan so yeah I'm, I'm i'm happy to cast a vote for a guy upon this earth because i think he's the guy that is going to be used in the tribulation i don't think he is the antichrist i think he is antichrist okay jesus said even now there are many antichrists among us so Anybody that chooses anything other than Jesus is Antichrist. You know, Tulsi Gabbard is, uh, uh, you know, a wonderful woman, very strong. So great to have her over on this team. But guess what? She's Antichrist. Yeah, she was raised Hindu. So her name actually is like a Hindu name after uh, a Hindu god. So 
she's anti Jesus Christ. What wonderful person, super nice. Elon Musk, this is not a believer. You know, uh, whatever you want to say, we understand these people are not on Jesus' team, but God can use anybody on the earth, and he often used people of outside of his family to accomplish his purposes. Okay? So, again, we have the days of Noah, and I just want to reiterate a little bit of the story. So if you go to Genesis 7, so first of all, Enoch is taken, Lamech, the father of Noah. Noah's name, name means rest. Noach means rest in Hebrew, but backwards it means grace, chen, grace. So his name means grace, and grace would bring deliverance through the flood. And his father was Lamech, the despairing. So think of Israel as being a father of despairing, and they will bring forth grace. So when Enoch dedicated the seventh from Adam was taken. He represents the church being raptured. Then his father or his son, I'm sorry, his son, Methuselah, would signal his death shall bring the despairing rest. The names from Adam all the way to Noah. And again, after a capital sin, no man can bring deliverance until 10 generations so God had it ordained already, the entire plan. Man is appointed, mortal, sorrow. But the blessed God shall come down teaching, dedicated, that's Enoch. His death shall bring, Methuselah, the despairing Lamech, rest and grace, Noach. So, the story of the flood you know how we always say, there's nothing new under the sun. That which has been done shall be done again. The story of the flood is about the great destruction and God predicted, told, prophesied to Adam that he would destroy the earth two times, once by water and once by fire. Now, the flood scenario has never been duplicated. What I like to envision in this story, besides... Noah, I have found you righteous in my sight. You, I will bring on the ark. So, how are you righteous? Mr. Bones? We are righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. He imputes his righteousness onto us. He that knew no sin became sin so that we who knew no righteousness could become the righteousness of God in Christ. So it was the divine exchange. So when he spoke to Noah, you're righteous, he's speaking to the church right now, you I see as righteous by my grace. You will come into the ark with me as I pour out destruction upon the earth. Okay? When the flood happened, the great fountains of the deep broke open. And the great windows of heaven were opened and the floodwaters came down. So we know from Revelation 19, waters are people. The waters are people and nations and tongues as a typology. So at the flood, the great earthquake and the fountains broke open and water came up. And the windows of heaven were opened and water came down. Now, how could that relate to the rapture, Mr. Bones? I'll make it really simple. The waters are people, and at the moment of the rapture, the earth will break open, the graves will be open, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Hallelujah. What about the waters coming down? All those that died and are in Christ will come down with him, and they shall receive their new glorified body. So, the waters are going to come down at the rapture, and the waters are going to be broken up, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, and we meet in the clouds. And just like the waters came down, the waters came up, and the ark was lifted up, and Noah 
grace was with seven, the church, in the ark above the waters, above the earth. That's how the rapture is going to be. So if we look at that, again, God said, get in the ark, and yet for seven days, and I'm going to bring the flood waters on. Well, let's go to, and then after the flood, I mean, the whole story is so prophetic. He's like, it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, from the time they got on the ark, 40 days and 40 nights brings you right into Hanukkah. And then the waters would build up upon the earth all the way until God remembered Noah and he caused a wind to pass over on Passover, on Passover, and the waters began to, Mr. Bones, ashwag, ashwag all the way down and they would go all the way down to nothing. So the ark, I'm sorry, the, the waters built up for 150 days. 15 is the number of judgment for God. Okay, just, re just remember that, 15. And so the ark was 300 cubits, which is 150 and 150. You see the two 15s? It was 30 wide and, and, and 50, 50 high. So that's 30 times 50 is 150. The waters were on for 150, and then they asswagged for 150. So he's always bringing back these 15s related to the judgment. But he has the ark come to rest on the 17th day of the seventh month, we know is the 17th day of the first month. Oh, what happened on the 17th day of the first month, Miss Bones? A resurrection day when the curse was reversed and death was beaten. Exactly. Jesus went on the cross to make the payment, but it wasn't quite finished. When he said it is finished, he said this is the last sacrifice. That part was finished. But he had to rise from the grave and beat death. And that was the day that he opened up the door for the resurrection of the dead. And he beat death and the curse was reversed. 17th day, 17th day of the first month. Then the story takes us to the first day of the fourth month. Then it takes us 40 days and 40 nights to the ninth and 10th of Av. God tells us, the story of Noah. He's got resurrection day, reversing the curse. Then he brings us to the ninth and 10th of Av where he says, I'm gonna release a dove and a raven. The raven goes to and fro through the earth, representing Satan doing his evil deeds. And the dove goes and comes back and goes in for seven and goes again and comes back and is held for seven and goes again and brings back an olive leaf and then it's done. So. God is telling us stories. He has the flood finally end and he opens up the door of the ark. He mentions the feast of the new year, Rosh Hashanah or Feast of Trumpets, and then finally removes the veil. So a foreshadowing of what Moses would do when he came down with his face shining and removes the veil and a foreshadowing of what Jesus will do when he finally removes the veil and when he peels back the windows of heaven. So, again, if we look at the story and then we go to Revelation 4, let's go there, Mr. Bones. Okay, I'm with you. Do you like that? Ventriloquism? Okay, where are we at? After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Door of the ark, door of heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, saying, Come up hither. Noah, you I have found righteous in my sight. You are the righteousness of God in Christ by belief, by faith, by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. Did, did Noah do anything to be righteous? No, he was just, he was purified because God had planned it that way. So you are purified by his blood. That's how we are righteous. So he says, I see you righteous. Here's an open door. Come on in. I saw an open door. He says, come up hither. I will show you things which, much, which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit. And think of us again, being changed in the moment, immediately in the twinkling of an eye. And we're going to be up in the spiritual realm. 
I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one that sat on the throne and he that sat on it was to look at like a jasper or a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne and in sight like unto, unto an emerald. So after the flood, God first introduces his rainbow. Here we are, a flood scenario, door open, grace goes in, there's a rainbow. And round about the throne were four and twenty elders, four and twenty seats, and upon the seats were the four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their head crowns of gold. We will be clothed in white raiment, and upon our head, crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded thunders and lightnings and voices. So I believe at the time of the flood, it's not uh, uh, listed there exactly, but I believe there were thunders and lightnings too. Isn't that what happens usually with a torrential storm? And there were seven lamps burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Okay, again, pre-tribulation rapture written throughout the entire Bible. But let's go back to the last um, verse in chapter 1. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks... The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. So then John's in heaven, and he sees the seven lamps burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. They are the church. There it is. He already said it. And then later, in the, in the next chapter, he's going to say, and we all sang from every kindred nation and tongue that is there because of his blood. He's cleansed us with his blood. But back to the ark comparison. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. So the letter mem in Hebrew. Uh, all right, let me show you. Like that. So that's a mem. So we got chaotic waters and then a sea of glass. And then the final form of the mem closes up the door, closes up the opening. But there's two types of waters in the mem. And what did we have in the story of Noah? The waters came up, very chaotic, killed everything, and then they started to calm down and assuag away. Okay. So there was a sea of glass like under crystal. The waters are people. When we're up there, it's going to be a sea of people at perfect peace. That is the church. That is the saved ones. In the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion and the second beast like unto a calf. And the third beast was, had the face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings round about them. They were full of eyes with, within, and they rest not day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. So all those different beasts, and what happens in the story of Noah? Bring one of every beast, or bring a couple of every beast into the ark, and seven of the clean ones for sacrifice. And they threw their crowns at him, and they said, Worthy, O Lord, were you, for thou hast created all things for thy pleasure, and for thy pleasure were all things created. And I saw on the right hand of him that sat upon the throne a book written within and on the back side with seven seals. Now we'll drop down to chapter 5, verse 9. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign upon the earth. So we're up there in heaven. He's getting ready to open a seal but has not opened a single seal. We know there's a White horse rider just ready to ride out and bring peace to Israel. We have the, the count of years from the time Jesus was on the cross. Okay? I always go back to this. 
God is perfect. His ways are perfect. He always makes things work out exactly perfect. It fits perfect for him to be on the cross in 30 AD and give a perfect 40 year warning until the 70 AD destruction. 31 still can work if we count one, two, three, all the way to 40, you're kind of sneaking it in, right? But 30 and 31 makes sense. 32 on the cross doesn't make sense. It's like, well, then they only had 38 years of, of warning. 33, it keeps getting worse after that. We realized we were all way early and it's not even possible that we could have been raptured back in 2017 when we saw all the signs because it had not been 2,000 years from the cross to include the tribulation. So the earliest that we could go from the cross, go 2,000 years and come back seven. 30 and 31 comes back to 23 and 24. 24 is slipping away. The flood scenario has never been repeated. That which has been done will be done again. There is no new thing under the sun. Look, is there anything whereof it may be said, hey, this is new. When the rapture happens, can anybody break that scripture, the word of God, and say, hey, it says here, nothing can be new. It's all been done before. Can there be anything new? No, it has been of the past. So God's typology is it's already been done. The flood scenario and the destruction of the earth has never been refulfilled. When you look at it as the great fountains of the deep breaking open and waters coming up and the windows of heaven bringing down waters and waters meeting in the middle and we waters are people that are going to be brought up and break open the earth like when Jesus cried with a loud voice, it is finished. The last sacrifice has been given. Not the whole story is finished, obviously, but it is finished with the sacrifices. There is no more sacrifice. So when he did that, there was a great earthquake and the graves were opened. And then the window or the veil of the temple was torn in half, opening the door, opening the pathway to God. But the people didn't rise up out of their graves until after Jesus was the first to rise up. And then he went down to hell and got them. And then he led captivity captive, brought them up to heaven. He was up there for a while consecrating them before he came down after eight days and then would walk with them for 40 days. So God's typology is his prophecy. He says, I'm telling you this story because this is how it's going to be. We're coming up on November 11th, 11-11 through 11-17 into 18. So you got your 117 code, you got your 118, which many have seen. That's, that's one of my personal ones between me and the Lord. Whenever I see it, I'm like, I love you too. Because I feel like he's saying I love you every time I see it. 118 or 811. Or even add a few more ones. So I, that's, that's just me. That's between me and my Lord. But, you know, people have seen that number too. And it's, it's, it's a way, especially the 1111. It's, it's, a, it's a prophetic wink from our Father who knows we're anxiously awaiting his soon return. So that's my thoughts. And uh, as you all know, we are working diligently for those. <sighs> Talk about the flood scenario, right? They'll be eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage right up until the day the floodwaters came and took them all away. Well, there were people on this earth in the which life was normal. And then the waters came and t literally took so many away. And, you know, for all those in Christ, they were taken right to his feet, right to his side. Okay. For those that weren't, they were taken away. And so we have this, this real smack in the face kind of a wake up call of what we know. But we also think, oh, you know, yeah, someday, someday. No, look. Just then, just like that, many were washed away into hell. And just like that, many were washed right up to their Savior. 
And so in addition to the supplies and, and, and financial support and everything else that we're doing for the people in North Carolina, we're also bringing these books, which is the Gospel of John and the Book of Romans combined. And it has in it, it's, it's, it's marked, there's a little map that you could start with. And it says here, the marked edition, see page 43. So I'm just going to read that real quick. It, it, it takes us through nine verses, the Romans Road, and it's really quite cool, quite clever. Um, our friend Jason, Jason from Georgia uh, brought these up. Uh, we showed uh, Jason and um, his Care Bear. Hey, Care Bear! Uh, uh, on one of our previous videos, but we'll start at page 43. Some of you have requested these. Um, we're down to one box. Uh, I, I, I I don't think we can send any more, um, but uh, God bless you for uh, requesting some, and I hope you're able to share them. Um, but these are very effective in helping somebody get from zero to salvation in a very short period of time. So you start out in on page 43, which is Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then it says, turn to page 47. So it's kind of fun too. You can imagine uh, a new person or an unbeliever kind of wanting to, you know, zip through. Hey, this is like a secret code. What is it? And this is chapter Romans six, chapter twenty or verse twenty-three. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he just said we all have sinned and fallen short. The wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Turn to page 45. Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He's letting, letting the new believer know, even though you were a sinner, he already died for you. All you have to do is believe in and on him. Then turn to page 51. And you could walk through this with him, which would be even more effective. But even handing these things out, it's not that much, but it is the most juicy part of the gospel, in my opinion. And this brings us to Romans 10, 9, 10, all the way down to 13 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Drop down to 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Turn to page three. Brings us back to John. Chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Turn to page 6. And this is John 3, 16 and 17. I'm so glad they included 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And by believing in Jesus, you are passed from death into life. His righteousness is imputed onto you. You are covered in his blood. When God looks at you, just like in the Exodus, he sees the blood on the door. He doesn't see what you were. You are a new spiritual creature, knit one with Christ. Turn to page 10. And this is John 5:24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. Turn to page 21. And this is 
John 10, 27 through 30. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Turn to page 38. And 38 brings us to John 20, verse 31. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Turn to page 59. So those 10 little sections is all you need to tell the most critical part of his gospel story. All have sinned, all have come short, but God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. By his blood, he has redeemed us back unto God, bought back from legal captivity unto Satan and death, redeemed is bought us back to God by his blood. By believing on him and calling upon his name, we are passed from death into life. So then it takes you into the Romans road, which, uh, Y'all can uh, look up on your own, but uh, just just a, a wonderful uh, creation here. Uh, you know, there's gospel tracts, there's cards, there's little notes you can give out. But um, I never thought of this, but if, if I were going to choose the two books I wish that people, an, an unbeliever, could read, and especially with that neat little map to go through. So fantastic job. So thankful for those, Jason. And... Um, uh, it, it, if we do get a bunch more requests, maybe we can connect you with the source of those. Okay, so um, we're going to give you an update on what's happening with uh, the North Carolina, Western North Carolina mission, so to speak, and, and, our, and our efforts and uh, some instruction on what to do next. As you know, things have been changing. So I'm going to invite my wife up. My love, come on forward. Hello, my love. Hello, hello. Fill us all in. What's going on in North Carolina? Well. And, and you want to uh, make a uh, mention about. Oh, well, thanks to everybody. We had, I had 37 people reach out and email me and ask for some of these to hand out. So thank you to all of you. We've emailed back and forth and I think everybody's gotten them. If you haven't, let me know. Well, we're almost out. So again, oh, I, yeah. I said uh, we might uh, hook them up with the source. No, but I'm just saying the people who did reach out and want some. Thank you thank for you. doing that, for helping spread. Spread the word. The good news. Um, did you tell them that we just got back from North Carolina again? No. We just got Sharing back from North Carolina <laughs> again. <laughs> and this time we went up to um, Asheville and beyond. Um, we hadn't been up there before. We knew that um, Cabins for Christ, we had talked about that in the last video, that Cabins for Christ were building the small cabins um, for people because, thank you, um, they are trying to stay in their land, they're camping in tents, and with it being colder now, um, and also they don't have a place to put stuff, and if they do leave, um, some some, That's another problem. Some places are being looted. Is uh, the wonderful <laughs> supplies? Uh, people don't have a place to put them, uh, and 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 even if they were to try to get a bunch, they don't have a place to to store it because they're yeah. living in a tent and setting things around. Yeah. So, so that's another reason why. Uh, clothes and, and such were there was a halt on some of it. Mm -hmm. It's not that it, that they don't need it. It's just it's, they don't have pause. A place. We're pausing for <laughs> yeah. a second on the clothes. Um, Anyway, so the Cabins for Christ that we helped and donated to, and now I can't even get through to him because his voice message is so full. And so that is great. And guess who's down helping them from Pennsylvania? Oh, I love this. The Amish. <laughs> the Amish are in town to help. They're going to be here this week helping build the cabins. And then that group is going to leave and go back home to Pennsylvania. And another fresh group is going to come. And they are very self-sustaining. And just basically want people to stay out of their way and let yeah. them do their work. Like, let us come down. Yeah. We, we, we take care of ourselves. We, we <laughs> yeah. shelter ourselves. Yeah. Just let us come down, do our work, and get out of here and just right. stay away. So. And so then we started also helping with um, Homes for Hope through Stephanie. 
at the arrow. This is one of the things we wanted to cover. You know, there, there's all these great places to give. And then there are terrible places to give where the government just steals it. And so what we're trying to do is be like the Psalm 112 man and uh, guide our affairs with discretion. We are gracious, full of compassion, and we want to give, but we're, we're, we're being very discreet in, in our placement of your resources that we've been entrusted with because we, you know, some of these places are taken off and then they got huge resources that might last them for years. That's wonderful. But, but we could have given some of that to this group over here mm -hmm. who's just trying to start. And if they don't get help, maybe they're going to fizzle out. So that, that's one of the things between Cabins for Christ, they're took care of, in, in my opinion. And yeah. God bless them. God bless them. They're Fantastic. doing great. Fantastic. Wonderful. Homes for Hope, a small group started by a girl named Stephanie from uh, Aeroponic Tower Channel. She teaches people how to grow mm -hmm. uh, food, grow your own food in these tower mm -hmm. things uh, I'm also on, on doing, YouTube. I'm also doing the cabins, and we helped and her she's meet doing, her exactly. goal. And, so, and she's having more high school students um, and groups that are local help with their cabins so that they don't have to house them and you know feed them and everything mm -hmm. so they're local so that's really great that the work that they're doing um we tell the story about uh alex and adam alex and, and adam that's okay so cool how so that, there's a family adam and his wife cammy they live in lake lure with their family and they have a carpentry business and so they were affected by the hurricane but not as bad as some people so adam was using his work company and tools and equipment to help for free get logs and tree removal. Now, um, this is huge because even where we are, there were so many trees down and there were people taking advantage and price gouging mm -hmm. to get the trees moved <laughs> because insurance for only won't $1, pay. only thousand dollars will take Insurance won't pay to get the trees out if it didn't hit your house. Mm -hmm. So you can have 10 trees down in your yard and there are these huge hundred year old oaks, but yeah. Sorry, insurance can't pay for them. So then they're the honest tree companies, of course, but they're backed up. But then you have other people who are like trying to come and knock and be like, here, for give us cash and we'll take care of there's, it. There's been a lot of bad stuff. So anyway, as Adam you, and... Let me, as, as, you, as you see the spirit of God moving, you also see the spirit of Satan moving. And there's people coming up and stealing and, and taking somebody else's stuff and trying to sell it somewhere else. I mean, yeah. so there's, there's bad stuff too. So yeah, anyways. so you just have to be careful. Got to be discreet. Yeah, but, um, or discerning. Discerning, yeah. I like it. But so Adam's business, he was doing it for free for the first couple of weeks, helping people. And then he decided to go ahead and start with the sheds and everything. Well, he's got a friend, Alex, who lives up in Indiana. And Alex and his family have like a homestead up there and they have a farm and they have a little roadside farm stand where they sell their eggs and their baked goods and sourdough bread. And they use the honor system. <laughs> I'm like, where is this place? This is wonderful. What a, what, a, what a lovely neighborhood to be able, they put the stuff out and they got eggs and, and sourdough bread and fresh baked chocolate chip cookies. And you just take what you want and you pay and you leave the money. And people there. come from all around to get it. They're yeah. making a living off of this. But Adam, but this is a I separate mean, thing. But Alex also is an electrician. And so Alex in Indiana is friends with Adam in Lake Lure. And so Alex said, Well, let me come down, Adam, and stay with you, and I'll help you wire and stuff these sheds that you're doing. And to help, which is a huge part, huge part. So Alex's boss up in Indiana is letting him come down and he's going to pay him his whole 40 week, um, 40 hour work week, 40 hour work week wage um, while he's gone. And so that's the boss's contribution to Helene. See, we all have different ways that we can help and help people help people. So he's coming down this next week um, to Lake Lure to stay with his friends so he can help wire. But he's like, if he had a GoFundMe and he said, if you can donate to help me get the electrical wires and things that I need, then, you know, it's awesome. It I can bring it all down. Up these houses. So I we're like, like, all oh, yeah, right. We're all over that. <laughs> and uh, so, so this is so cool. Yeah, I, mean, I love that. Because that was one of the things we saw these little cabins is like, 
well, how, how are we going to heat them? You know, and then right. there's generators. Uh, right. The cabins for Christ, I think, are going with some solar mm -hmm. uh, powering. But again, you know, there's limits to some of this. Yeah. But to be able to wire them up, I mean, that's so, so that's very cool. Very excited that was that. exciting, too. And I hope uh, that that somehow we can we can uh, support him that he can do longer than a week. Or, well, we'll or show back. we can show. Yeah, something we're going to show a little bit. Um, but then, so we we went up. We went up to Asheville. When we first got up there, we were like, hmm, hmm downtown Asheville looks pretty hopping. Yeah, we Doesn't, were like, where's the damage? I thought this whole city damage? was washed yeah. away. Um, and, and then we saw the river. <laughs> and then we saw down by the river. Yeah. And, and you so just, oh my gosh. This nice little river and all these uh, houses and, and buildings and, and a whole uh, art district and everything next to the river. And then the river rose so high that, I mean, just totally gutted these places. These big, giant structures just, you know, bent over and filled there with mud and cars. There were still cars and... stuck in sand. And yeah. the sand was everywhere. I just, my teeth were so gritty because the sand washed up when the river's waters washed up. Mm -hmm. It just, when they went back down, it left all the sand. It looks like a beach. It made a park look like a beach. Yeah. Which is better than the mud, but. Sure. But so we're walking around this devastated, you know, area that used to be a park and there's this other woman walking and we're like, oh, she must be out walking too. And we, hi, hi, started talking. Well, and she's a tourist too. <laughs> So we just started talking and she's like, well, my daughter's at a birthday party. And so I'm just walking, waiting for her to get done. And, you know, um, it's just good for the kids to have some kind of normal thing, like a birthday party to go to. We're like, oh, you're from here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Things are good. Things are good, though. You know, sometimes, most of the time it's good, but sometimes it can get overwhelming. Like I, it's been three days. Today's supposed to be bath day and it's been three days since I had a bath. But it's so exhausting having to get the water and then heat it up on the stove and then go pour it in the tub in order to take a bath. And we're like, Mary, we she, learned her name was Mary. She was acting so nonchalant. I thought, yeah. oh, she must have been up in one of those houses, not affected. Yeah. And, and here she she still doesn't have clean water. She got they got electricity back. Mm -hmm. The town is starting to function. But that's the thing. Even even they didn't get destroyed, but they lost all power and all water. Mm -hmm. And so they still have potable water being trucked in mm -hmm. and then delivered to sites and then people have to come and get it and and restaurants and b bigger corporations are getting you know filter systems installed and pumps mm -hmm. to to uh, get back to, be to able function to, mm -hmm. but tell her what what how, so, we said, how, so can, we how can we help you mary let us help you let us give you no 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 but you know what my friends all work in the service industry and they have lost so much and are Nobody's losing more anymore. because nobody the tourists have stopped especially this time of year the blue ridge parkway everybody goes up to north carolina because the trees are so beautiful as they're changing mm -hmm. and they really rely the on crisp. the tourists this time of year through the holidays mm -hmm. and they're not getting that and there are several they're online there are counties that are open that you can go and if you guys can go visit and patronize their Go little out to eat, shops. Buy some souvenirs. And, yeah. I mean, so she said, you can go, you know, don't help me. Go help my friend Amanda. She works down at the pizza place. And so go in and ask for okay. her. And so Dr. Barry's like, we have to eat for, for charity? <laughs> All right, I'll do it. We'll get some takeout, you know? So, so hey, we're eating for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so another that thing that, you know. Lovely story. People and that do. leads us into another person we tried to help. So we, 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 we followed the destruction down the river. And, and we ended up going uh, a little east of Asheville, which is Swannanoa. Now, that place was wiped yeah, out. Yeah, it just looks like wiped out. World War III hit. You know, again, the, the sudden destruction came upon them and washed so many away and washed lives away, lost their, their, their livelihoods. And so there's these broken shacks, you know, bent and filled with mud and people out front, you know, with signs written on cardboard, we have free food, the, you know, instead of we'll work for food, we yeah. have free food for all the, the city. Because we saw the Cajun Navy down there. They had a area set up. We saw Samaritan's, Samaritan's Purse, Purse down there and they're all in the hazmats, hazmats you know, mucking out these houses. And a lot so, of the deal is it's toxic. It's the mud, yeah. the sand and, and the water and everything is toxic because of chemicals. And one of the most eerie and devastating things to me was seeing the stuff, the stuff hung in the tree, like clothes, clothes and, and garbage and different things because the water was up that high yeah. and then when it receded you know things got trapped in the trees so you can just imagine there were 
Yeah, in the in people. the earth, the days right after, uh, the, those are the people that that saw unspeakable things. Yeah. And so that that hit really hard. Even after a month, even after what, almost six weeks. Yeah. There is still so much to do up there. If you do want to go up and volunteer, go through Samaritan's Purse. Get, get, they get are organized. With somebody and do it properly. Yeah, but Samaritan's Purse, you know, they have a list of people. They are organized. They know this. We're doing this date, this, this date, and you can sign up for a date. And um, they have a little training that you go through. So they would be the best ones if you wanted to actually, you know, get hands on and you know, volunteer there. Otherwise, just you need to know someone, have a contact um, if you're going to go up there and try to help. Yeah, yeah. The because people a up lot there, of people coming up can get in the way. And the people up there also, um, the people that are from there, they're very leery of um, outsiders. Like mm -hmm. this one man that we Farrell. met. Yeah, we met Farrell. And he was up there and he has been up there every week since. Um, with the tent and a grill and making truck food. full of supplies. And people so. coming and feeding. And he said when he first came, people were like, mm, standoffish, outsider. But he said since he's been consistent with coming up and people know him now. And now they're like, they, they know he's going to be there. They come and they get fed by him. When, when are you coming, coming back? back? <laughs> and so, and he's got a great testimony of his own self. You know, the Lord, he said, saved him last year. And this is just his, because we tried to give him money. And he's like, no, nope. no, no, don't help me. <laughs> Go help oh, the lady the at that church. <laughs> he didn't know her name, but he's like, that lady over there is doing good work. She needs it. So we're like, okay, so Lord. We had a little bit of cash, you know, in our hand. I'm like, all right, and so we go over there, and, and the, she's busy talking to a bunch of people. So I asked this girl, where's the donation box? I want to give this. So she's like, oh, you got to talk to Judy. Judy. And so we, we waited our turn, and we got in, and, and, and she started telling us a little bit. And I said, can we give you this to help for anything? And she's like, can I, can I use this how, how we need to? I'm like, absolutely, whatever you need. And she goes, this is so perfect. I was praying this morning that... Uh, God would send supply because we need new tables. Our tables are falling in. We need tables. We don't have, I've stuff. just not had cash to go buy tables. And so with their donations mm -hmm. marked, you know, for hurricane relief, they, they feel like they can't do anything to help their own church, mm -hmm. even though they're giving. So, we're, you know, we're like, absolutely, you know, use this for what you need. And then you're going to tell what they're getting into. Well, and also, we're going to show a little Yeah, time. we'll show you. But also with the tables for the supplies that they have set up for people to come. But also she said they have people that have already donated food for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And so they're having this Thanksgiving dinner at their church for all the displaced people. But she's like, well, we don't have tables. Yeah. What if the <laughs> tables like <laughs> fall the with the turkey? turkey goes rolling down the you hill. Know? So <laughs> that was just, that was great. Um, but we were really excited and Mary, I mean, Judy was really excited too. Next week they are, um, okay, I'm going to back up for one second, but wait, okay. their church has, most of their congregation has been displaced. I mean, the members aren't there anymore because of the hurricane. And so even paying the church's bills, um, they're not used to having the utilities run 24 seven, seven. Yeah. Um, so that's been a financial thing for them, but they also now are taking in 80 people next week. They're turning their Sunday school rooms into housing. All the rooms and the gymnasium and the And basement. they've already had beds donated, like cots, beds donated. And so we have these backpacks. Where are the backpacks? We left them in that thing. Oh, uh, so everybody can have survival their- Survival backpacks. They can have their own backpack to carry their belongings in. And it has all the hygiene, you know, stuff in it, their own shampoo and toothpaste and toothbrush and all gloves that. And Plus hat, gloves and hats light. and socks and, you know, just, just everything for all of them. And a couple of these in each one. And each one got that. Um, so they're going to be doing that. So we'll be back up there helping with them. But then Judy also directed us because we're like, she said, what church are you from? And we're like, we're from the Dr. <laughs> Berry channel. <laughs> Don't you know Mr. Bones? We're yeah, from the we're Watchman famous. community <laughs> we're on YouTube. We're from the Watchman community. And we have the this community. The most generous and gracious people on the earth. That's right. They are. People that really understand the value of building treasures in heaven mm -hmm. and doing the work of God because we have a short time left. Yep. And this is uh, what has, has been so motivating for us. Yeah. And so she said, well, there. let me point you to, oh, man. 
Oh yeah, this is a little Let bit me of a point tear you to Black Mountain Children's Home. And um, it is a orphanage slash foster care home. It, they've been around since 1910, but in this building since 1923, or this this um, land and buildings. A couple of buildings. Yeah, well, They're during the land side, during the mudslide, four of the buildings just got wiped away, and then six other buildings got damaged, including their um, cafeteria hall. And their kitchen. And, yeah, their kitchen and all that. <clears throat> And so they are not state funded at all. They are private Christian group. They have the required state licensure, mm -hmm. licensure to stay open. But um, yeah, kids that are abused or neglected um, come to them and they some stay a few days, a few weeks, some stay a few years or until they're 18. And they do have programs where they help them beyond 18 years old too. So they're, a, their family, you know, and they raise these kids. I really and no awareness, you know, no they way have to no, say help. They have, they they don't have internet right now. They don't have no power, power, no water, no beds, and so they can't ask for help. And mm -hmm. so we so, are <laughs> as being their voice. This um, this is this is what our our hope was. Our our prayers. Uh, I think uh, I may have already inserted the clip of us driving up to North Carolina, and I, I literally I was like, Father, lead us. We don't know where we're going. We don't know where we're going to end up, but we're trusting in you. You you have sent us with supplies and and financial means. Lead us to somebody we can help that needs what we have. That's what we're praying on the way up. And, and lo and behold, we get there. And she's like, I was praying for somebody this morning to come. And mm -hmm. this has been happening over and over and over And you know, again. we said from the beginning, you know, we have a heart for children. And, you know, we started out helping the families in our own community, you know, with small children. And now, you know, to help this um, children's home, they had 170 children. None of them were harmed. None of them? None of, no, none of the children I were harmed. And none that. of their Hallelujah. staff was harmed. Okay. Yeah, just their... They got to high ground. Um, just their buildings and stuff. Yeah. So All their stuff. Yeah, Mary... I keep saying Mary. <laughs> Mary's the one that hasn't had a bath. Mary, we hope you've had a bath. <laughs> I hope you got a bath. She did. She's so funny. <laughs> I hope you have internet to watch our channel. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Judy is going to be having a um, toy Christmas, drive. Christmas thing. Uh-huh. And so, so is our neighbor Tasha. All right. So... We could go on and on with stories. Did you want to talk about Brianne's story or or Scott's story or uh, anybody else immediately before you give our our message? Well, just I was going to read Brianne's letter. The Ferrises that we've been helping up in Rutherfordton, um, they're just so grateful and thankful, and they have some really amazing God stories too. How things were they needed a part for their ATV, and we were able to hook them up with somebody in Georgia who had the who part. Has an ATV. And, business so anyway just different things like that um they were able to give um 23 generators or 23 families generators you know through our help and everything they were the ones that hooked up the the, the water wells systems to mm -hmm. the bathtubs so yeah they could have so they're fresh just water. i was going to read her letter but it's kind of long and i'll probably cry through it anyway but anyway <laughs> put it in the community section <laughs> yes um all right, so uh, our, our point with this is um, it's really crazy, and it takes a lot of hands-on, and Danielle's on the phone or the text or the email constantly. And so we're so thankful for all of you that have helped. And um, if, you, if you want to continue helping, um, if, if you contact us, we'll tell you where the need is greatest right now, or you can just continue to send it to us to hand off. And, um, you know, we, we, we're trying to open the, uh, the communications in, in how we can do that with uh, email. And also, um, we, we're going to give our address here. Um, A lot I of people would... that wanted to send checks, we made our address available. If you email me, I'll give you our address and our phone number so yeah. that we can communicate. But I just don't want to make it public. I will make my email public. And then if you feel led that you want to give, then... Email me. Because remember, you... there's an evil spirit moving too. And so uh, we've already had death threats delivered to this place more than once. So, um, yeah. Not I, over this, like when he first not, started not four this. years ago. Yeah. Just, so for some reason, people don't Bones. like Mr. Bones. Some I don't understand. Don't like I don't understand it. Poor Mr. Bones. <laughs> Sorry, old buddy. Hey, remember, 
Jesus won. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, was there anything else you wanted to add? Oh, that, that was a lot. That was a lot. So um, um, if I, if you do email me or message me or call me, it's a lot. Thank you for the grace that you extend me if I am delayed in getting back to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, because she really we, is on all day, we, every day. Well, we, and we still do have our patients base. Yeah. And that's also another reason I don't want to make our um, address public here at work because of people, for our patients' privacy uh -huh, too, yeah, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, and, and, and uh, maybe uh, 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 alert us if you are coming to surprise us and visit. <laughs> We've had many surprise visits. Which is, which, which is wonderful. Which is wonderful. Which is wonderful. But um, and it's gotten to a point where it would be good to have a heads up. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, the Lord's work is being done. And we're so um, blessed and uh, truly humbled to be uh, thought of, uh, to, to be his hands and feet upon the earth. And um, I just, I, I never feel like I can do enough. But um, it's 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 awesome to be being used, and you guys are being used. And this channel that you know a lot of the world looked at and mocked and scoffed, and I didn't really understand all of what would happen. But um, this, I think, this is one of the most valuable things that ever came out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, that and the fact that uh, I think I know the rapture. <laughs> Well, how many other people know, how many people have you encouraged to dig deeper in the Bible or open their Bible comment. again and read comment. again? So you are, and, and, um, you've, um, you're doing God's work. Following up, we're you're going to go work. through Psalm 112 and um, I'm going to uh, help you to allow that to lift your spirit and get your your mind focused on heavenly things and on God's word, promise, and provision, his plan for you. It's so wonderful. It's, it's one of the ones that has just strengthened me over the years. You just, you just can't help but just get filled with love as you're reading it. So we're going to go over that. Okay? All right. I guess that's the next step. So We're looking up. We're looking up. We're looking looking up. up. It's coming soon. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll have this out tonight because election day is tomorrow and the world is going to change one way or the other. And, um, oh man, I'll, I'll just leave it there. Okay, on to the next segment. Okay, so Psalm 112. What a beautiful psalm and, and something that is really life-changing. It, it changes the intent of your heart, your spirit. It, it, it gets you focused on his promise and his, his deliverance. And uh, it really is something that I wish every Christian could uh, memorize and kind of put in their repertoire of their prayers. It starts out, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. And I like to say full eareth. Fear is F ear. Full eareth the Lord. How do you worship somebody? How do you fear the Lord? You, you hang on his every word. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Now, do you delight greatly in his commandments, Mr. Bones? Oh, I do, because I know them. Most people would think, oh, the commandments, you know, are thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Well, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that layeth waste at noonday. Thou shalt not be afraid, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. That is a commandment. That is a law of God. The entire word is his law. It is his testament. Okay? The entire book is Torah. Torah Torah is Tav, Vav, Resh, Hey. The cross, 
the nail, the prints, or the head, or as you think on, and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the grace of God. The prints nailed to the cross, as you meditate on that, meditate on that, sila, meditate on that. That is spiritual worship. God is a spirit and must be worshiped spiritually. So dwelling and meditating on his Torah. People have only translated that as law, and it has a, a kind of a negative connotation in our spirit. But when you understand it is the law that saved us and protected us that Jesus came to fulfill, not abolish, but fulfill, and by the law we are saved. Not by us keeping the law, but by Torah, by every word of God. Not one jot or tittle should be taken away. So when you're meditating on his word and memorizing his psalms, you're truly worshiping his word. How, how do you worship somebody? How do people on the earth worship who they like? They know everything about them. They have their pictures. They have all their stuff, right? They think about them all the time. They watch everything they do. How do we worship our God? Hang on his every word. So the prince nailed to the cross, meditate on that is the Holy Spirit. And when you hear, what's the number one commandment, Mr. Bones? Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. And then thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy strength and all that is within thee. Mr. Bones is killing it. Mr. Bones, I'm already dead. <laughs> the dead in Christ raised first. <laughs> and that's when the waters will break up from underneath and the whole earth will quake. Okay? So do you get that? I just, I just, I love that. When I understood that, when I learned that, changed everything. And that's, that's how the psalm is. Blessed is the man. Oh, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. How about this commandment? His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. My kids? I'm not so sure about them. You know, sometimes they're not, you know, walking as upright and, uh, and spiritual as, as I wish. Is this, is this something I can count on? He delighteth greatly in my commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. What a promise. What a wonderful thing. You know, parents who say, oh, pray for my kid. I, I don't think they're saved and this and that. The righteousness that we exhibit and live has power into our children's lives. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious, full of compassion, and righteous. As you marry yourself to this word and meditate on it daily, his light and his grace changes you, and his love fills you like the stone water pot filled with water and turned into the best wine, you become gracious, full of compassion and righteous. A good man sheweth favor and lendeth. He shall guide his affairs with discretion. Again, that's what we have been trying to do with these donations. We got in donations from all over the world and rather than just throw it at one organization and let it sit unused, We've been very diligently searching out the most effective places to give at the time. And it continued to change from emergency water and diapers and rags and, and, and blankets to clothes and, and uh, supplies for daily living and different kinds of foods to now we need to work towards shelters. And what about shelters with electricity? And are these guys doing good? What about this group that's trying to, to get started? We need to support them. And so that's, that's what our life has been revolving around right now and will continue as long as we're here. And we hope to leave good resource in the hands of those that are left behind. 
Surely he shall not be moved. The man who delighteth greatly in his commandments, the man that feareth the Lord and walketh with him, who is saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings, bad news. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established like perfect peace, like a sea of crystal glass. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. Help, I'm melting. The desire of the wicked shall perish. What a beautiful psalm to uplift your heart, to reveal the heart of God and some of his plans for your future. You don't have to try to become more righteous. You fill yourself. Mary hath chosen the good thing. She hath chosen to sit at Jesus' feet. Oh, Martha, Martha, you're worried about much, but Mary hath chosen the good thing. Sit at his feet and be fed and read and read and meditate and ask him to lead your steps through his word. And as you hear it, Love, compassion, and grace comes back out. Out of your belly comes rivers of living water. I hope you all are safe, blessed. We are coming at a very exciting time. Tomorrow's going to change the world one way or the other. So uh, I hope it is wonderful and exciting. And I hope that... Uh, the whole world gets rocked, you know, in a good way. And then I hope we are on our way out and the rest of this plan. Again, we go on the day the flood started, the 17th day of the second month, which is the eighth month. Heshvan 17 will be November 17th and 18th. If we go then, imagine 40 days of chaos upon the earth, 40 days of destruction, and then right in the middle of Hanukkah, one who is the Antichrist rises up at Hanukkah, just like Antiochus Epiphanes and the story of the Maccabees. It's perfect timing. Oh, I wanted to uh, say this. From the date of the flood, 1260 days brings us exactly to the middle of the tribulation, May 14th, 2028, Israel's birthday. I apologize. I misspoke. The, the date will be May 1st, 2028. That'll be Israel's 80th birthday. But that is the true birthday on God's calendar. That is IR5. So Israel was born on IR5 in 5708 on the Hebrew calendar. It translated to May 14th, 1948. But God goes by his calendar, 5708 and IR5. So in the middle of the tribulation, it will be exactly 1260 days from the flood date to the 80th birthday of Israel. I find that incredibly significant considering the prophecy in Psalm 90 that this generation when it hits 80, we'll all fly away. And of course, they all fly away into the wilderness on eagle's wings where they're protected for 1260 more days. Is that very cool or what? That really elevates this date. So I hope your eyes are open. I hope this was a blessing and I hope we don't have to come very up, back on very often. But uh, until then, uh, keep your hand to the plow and keep on trudging, working for the Lord and spreading his word. And we will see you here, there, or in the air. Mr. Bones, I'm out of here. Make the earth great again. Come Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Where are we going, Dr. Barry?
going to North Carolina looking for trouble. We're looking for people in trouble. Uh, because we're not just Americans, we're Christians. And Christians have a heart to help those in need. And so we're praying that God leads us to somebody specifically in need of what we can help with. And that's what we're doing. And we don't even know exactly where we're going, but we're going through Asheville, which got hit pretty darn hard. And, uh, you know, some roads are more passable. So that's what we're, that's what we're trying to do is uh, get up to where uh, people maybe uh, are having trouble expressing their needs. So we're working with a lot of great charities, a lot of people that have gone in there, but um, we want to see what we can find too. So pray for us. I never went that far that way. But yeah, I mean, this was just all <clears throat> covered in trees and grass and <clears throat> all this sand. I'm still like, where did all this sand come from? Mm -hmm. um, near the bathroom, there used to be swings. And you used to be able to go under that bridge to the other side. exhausting like some days it seems like it's okay and then some days like you can handle it and some days you're like i'm exhausted mm -hmm. i haven't had a bath in a few days oh because you can't because i have to warm it up on my stove and get all oh. the water from people still oh i'm not taking really? a bath in that nasty water <laughs> i can jump down there and get in Even when the creek rises. So was this? Yeah, people go in there. Was that shops? That was the art gallery. That's where all. That's where all the art galleries were. This is a month later. Totally unlivable. And the campers to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> 